to qualify. Yellow flag now in the air, eight laps into this one here at Madison International Speedway and trouble for the man that sits ninth in points coming into this one, Joe Graff Jr. And the only reason he's ninth in points is because he did not run the initial race of the year at Daytona. This kid has turned a lot of heads. Yeah, he actually started further up in the field and had an okay start, actually. He was qualified in the sixth position, dropped back a few spots, so perhaps a handling issue early on to a point when you have a car that's soft in the pedal where the car does not want to slow when you want it to. Oh, Look at that. Oh, no. Sheldon Creed, the point leader, going around in turn number four. That will bring out the fourth caution of the night here in Madison. Well, Creed might have flat spotted his tires enough. We might see our point leader on pit road here. So the cars that did not pit, on our most recent caution, now under the fourth amber. This could be the chance for Creed to get that car fixed because it was a lap car that caused the situation, but he's not had the car he's wanted all night long. Con Nicolopoulos in the 06 was involved in that one. Let's take a look. Watch that 06. They come on that car really quickly. Actually, it's Brad Smith, my apologies, in the number 48, and he was right on the bottom side of the racetrack, but Sheldon Creed and Eddie Thatcher were side by side. Three wide doesn't work here in turn three. And using a, slow, a slower car on the bottom like a pick there was not the opportune thing for Eddie Thatcher. Maybe back in the day. And she has more laps here on this racetrack than any other racetrack that she competes on in ARCA. But right now we got another car going around here. Tommy Sixth Vi caution again. of the day. Tommy Vi, second spin in the 10 car. So Tommy Vi bringing out the caution. And there he is in that Andy Hillenberg machine. Extreme Cleaner available at Hardware Hank. That team is looking <laughs> to do a lot this coming season. New York Racing Series, that sponsor has brought Tony Morakovich to the team. And hopefully for Tommy Vi's debut a little bit better. We'll Two be right back here. Set. Find out what's going on here in Madison. What a great jump from the outside by Eckes in the 15. Right to oh, the front. Oh, Ernst it? is going around. Can he avoid the contact? I think he is indeed going to just get around and still Keep it all in one piece. I don't think anyone actually made contact with him once he lost control. He was trying to get under the 28 of Sheldon Creed. They ran out of room. I think he may have just turned it left a little bit to try to avoid running into the 28 of Creed and wasn't able to hold on to his car. Well, one of the things we talk about, Phil, is with this new repave as uh, really a one-groove track, and it gets narrow when they come off those corners. Not a lot of room to move. You see him drive underneath the 20. He didn't quite have enough room. Got his left sides on the rumble strips down there. I think it got the rear end up bouncing a little bit, and around he went. What a great job by those cars behind him. Look at Harrison Burton narrowly avoiding disaster. Yeah, the 41 of Zane Smith narrowly missed him as well and of course Smith three-time winner this season last thing he wants to do is get it damaged early on with his chances to win see Raleigh thought he had a full lane width down there below the 28 of Creed but when Creed got back in the throttle he actually turned a little bit to diamond the racetrack a little bit to come off a little bit lower it's so narrow coming off those corners because there's just not much groove up there Yeah, I'm not really sure how Harrison Burton, the 12, was able to avoid the spinning 18 of Herbst. No? And Natalie issue Decker. there for Natalie Decker in that 25 machine, and she's got some heavy right side damage. She sure does. You can see the right front tire that is askew. Natalie's been very consistent this year. Had a sixth-place finish last time out at Madison, which was her second-best base finish of the year after that place finish she had at Daytona yeah three top tens in the last five not gonna be her night tonight however look at that right front yeah right front and right rear yep. damage but uh... just got a little bit loose getting down in the corner looked like she might have it saved for a moment then just ran out of racetrack Dean great battle for the third spot Ooh. Oh, contact. Looks like Zane got into the outside wall. There may have been contact. And that caution is out and significant damage for the three-time winner, Zane Smith. Going to have huge point implications possibly for Zane, who comes in here just 55 points behind Sheldon Creed. Let's see if there's some contact right here. Smith and Gustine Smith gets a little bit loose. They cut a tire down, maybe that 
it right front. I think I think he just got a little bit loose there, Vince. Uh, and drove right back to the front. And here's Tom Birdie nearly going around, coming down towards the pit lane. He's going to avoid any kind of contact. And we do go yellow. His pit box now. I'd say the car going around the outside. Sheldon Creed, our second place car, robbed enough air off that rear spoiler, and that got him loose. You see him now. Watch him lock the brakes up and keep that car out of the inside pit wall. Yep, nice job on that. So they'll slow down, and Michael Self for the second time will see. And there we have Leilani Munter going around. And it will cause a yellow and a late restart. So hold on. Mechanical earlier on. You can see the black. Yeah, you can see her path all the way down there. And here's the onboard. Just got a little bit loose. Remember now, we had 60 laps on these tires, Kevin. She did a nice job keeping that car out of the inside wall. And Creed is going to try it down below the line, to the line. Michael Self has won in Chicagoland for the second time in 2018, and they're crashing behind him. Decker and Graf will roll past the line. Self wins by just over a tenth of a second. And get down there and trying to hang on. And then further back, coming to the checkers. So there we saw, did, did Natalie Decker get a little bit loose? I'm not Before sure. Before the contact, or did something turn her? The 77 definitely got into Natalie, and that's what turned her around. Okay. She might, maybe she got a little bit loose to start with. They were battling for position. They were battling for the 11th and 12th spots there. They still end up finishing 12th and 13th. Looks like, she, looks like there was some contact that got her loose, Kevin. See Joe into the outside wall. Natalie also into the outside wall. That's what you hate to see. Coming off the big win last week, Sheldon Creed hoping for another one here. Michael Self hoping to go back to victory lane in trouble for Gustine. Gustine comes into this race sixth in the point standings, and he's got a heap load of damage on the front of that front end of that machine. First caution of the day, he reported the car was loose at some point in the early portions of the race, and here we go off a of turn number two. It caught him. Gustine in the wall, bringing out our first caution. Bad break for the Wintron team here at Iowa Speedway. Uh, now he just sits awaiting the ARCA safety team at this racetrack. Let's take a look at what happened to Gustine as we go on board with the green camera. Same car they've used all year long on the short track, but it just was not handling well. He got up off the groove. Maybe he just burped the gas a bit. And for a long slide, he went into the inside safer barrier here at Iowa. And you heard the throttle just a little bit there. He was kind of riding the throttle up and down to try to save that race car. Uh, Gus is a talented race car driver, but the handling bit him here today. Aero really comes into play. The air can have major factors on how these cars run two and maybe sometimes three wide as Riley Herbst tries to make it again. He's got a very fast race car, but it's hard to pass here when cars are side Whoa. by side. Hard into the wall is Riley Herbst. Almost 70 laps into this one. He had to have a car coming up on his right-hand side for that car to just veer. Either that or something broke on the 18 team because that was a violent hit. Michael Self was the car he was passing, I believe, Bob. And as they made their runs, remember, Self led this race, lost two spots on pit road. He was back to fourth. Riley's trying to get a spot back here. Let's take another look. Keep your eye on the 18. And there it is. It looked like the 55 car was just barely on the right side of the 18. And I don't know what shook down there, but it was a hard hit for Riley Herbst. Watch this. Boom. No question, Riley thought he was clear of the 55, and Michael Self was on the gas on the outside coming off that second corner. You know, honestly, when you look at that, uh, you, you got to wonder what the communication was from the spotters riding outside the top 10 just a short bit of time ago. Yeah, his best short track run this year has been eighth at Toledo Speedway, and he pitted early on. Hey, here we go, the 55 around again. Wow. That was quick. Wow right in front of Christian Eckes and the JBL camera for him. Michael Self with trouble. Let's take a look at what happened to Self. Went to the outside, trying not to get the back of the 98 of Mason Mitchell, and it just like he got way up on the gray there, Bob. Close call for Christian Eckes right there, too, having to get off the gas and not hit the brakes too hard. Maybe just ride them a little bit. Watch this right here, right in front of the nose of Christian Eckes. Michael Self gets loose and cuts right down in front of him. 
We saw the hood flaps bop up momentarily because all that air moves Smith the Bob is how fast he is every lap, not just qualifying or practice. David Sear with some trouble in that Kimmel Racing number 69 here. Major damage to the back end of that race car. He took a big lick up there in the corner. Ohio California driver racing for Kimmel Racing. We see the red marks on the wall prior to that, so maybe he just lost it on entry. Unfortunately for Sear, his fourth start here at Iowa Speedway will not be a good result. That driver runs part-time. He's been racing with uh, Mark Ebert's team. His second start this season for Kimmel Racing. And that's one of the older bodies uh, that uh, still allowed in ARCA competition. We went to the new composite bodies just a couple of seasons ago. Let's take a look at what happened to David Sear. Take a look on the right side of your screen all by himself past the Sunoco lights there and he just got down to the bottom of the corner. A bit of indecision perhaps on whether to enter the corner low or let it drift up and that really bit him there. Oh no, hold on Christian Eckes. His car's been a handful today, Bob. Loose off a of turn number two early in the race, nearly lost it in there. Spinning off a of turn four, don't know if he had help though. Two starts at Iowa Speedway prior to today in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. A top 10 run last year, just outside the top 10 two years ago with an 11th place run. But Eckes, uh, he's a good kid and he's a great talent, a former Snowball Derby winner, but you know he's not happy here today. Let's take a look at what happened to Christian Eckes. Oh, contact from the inside there coming off the corner. Car just came up into him. Looked to be the 40 car of Sam Mayer. One more look. Look at the white car on the bottom drifting up the track into Eckes' line. Indeed, there was contact with Christian Eckes. So uh, not only is he not happy because he's been having a tough day, but uh, 